back on the Rich Eisen Show radio network. Now one big happy family back with our Roku channel audience. We just saw a clip of Asphalt City available in theaters next Friday, March 29th. It is uh, a terrific film that premiered at the 2023 Cannes Film Festival. And uh, the production company, Dogwood Pictures, the debut film of that new production company that is launched by the actor and producer of this film, Ty Sheridan, who's here in the program. By the way, congrats on the first, you know, maiden voyage for a production company, too. Thank you. Like yeah, no, I appreciate that. That's pretty Thank cool. You. Sean yeah. Penn, too. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually did my very first film with Sean. So Which film was, was that again? It was a movie called The Tree of Life. And uh, I was 11 years old at the time. Come so. on. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, we, we, my, my best memory of Sean is we were shooting down on the Gulf Coast in Texas and he was staying at the beach house right next to us. And yeah. my parents were out on the front porch having a cold beer and they saw Sean pull up and he was walking across the yard and they said, hey, run over there and ask Sean if he wants a cold beer. And so I ran across the yard and I said, hey, Sean, you want to come have a cold beer with my mom and dad? And he's like, sure, I'll take a cold beer from the 11 year old bartender. And so he came <laughs> over and had a beer with us. And so, yeah, we had a, you know, had a very friendly kind of first experience together and then it was it was cool you know sean does a lot of work through his organization core and um got very involved with during the malibu fires with the fire department there mm -hmm. and so i think you know he has a very personal connection with with first responders and i think through the process of making this this film um i mean they're they're such an essential part of our society so really this is, this is what this film is about it's about it's a very close look at, at two medics one you know, a rookie who's, who's, who's new, the new kid on the block, so mm -hmm. to speak. And then, and then Sean, who's, you know, a 30 year veteran who's uh, had lots and lots of experience. So did you reach out to Sean and say, do you want to play this role? Cause again, this yeah. is your production company, your producer here. Did, were you the one who picked up the phone and gave I, him a call? So I had, okay. So this film has been around for a, a long time. I've been trying to make it okay. since 2017, 18, okay. something like that. Uh -huh. So we reached out to Sean. I remember sending Sean an email in like 2018 and he said, you know, timing's not right exactly. And then years, years went by and we went, we went back to, to Sean and after all his work, you know, during, during the pandemic and with the fires, I think he had a, he had a, he had a lot of excitement around it. And so, yeah, Sean was the, the, the person we always wanted to make this film with. So we have, we went, went full circle and and got him on board. Well, and again, you, Ty, so many people know you for Ready Player One and obviously the Cyclops in a couple of X-Men movies. And so obviously you and Sean Penn jump off uh, a page when you see a cast member. Uh, also, for the purposes of this show as well, when you look down a cast member, I see the name Mike Tyson on it. Never uh, heard of him. <laughs> um, Mike Tyson is in this film. Mike Tyson is definitely in the movie. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Um, you have the floor on what <laughs> on Mike. Well, because I mean, I I saw him in The Hangover. Uh -huh. You know, I mean, I, <laughs> yeah, I know his yeah. I know his filmography. Has he ever been on your show, by the way? Oh, he has. Okay. He's been in that yeah. chair. Well, yeah, a long time figured, ago. Yeah. Oh, he's been here. Wow. What yeah. a, you, what and a, as a matter of fact, when you walk out of here and you see the photos on the uh -huh. wall, you'll see a photograph of him uh, acting as if he's about to bite my ear. <laughs> so that's on the, that's on the wall in the Classic. hallway. Okay. I'll so check how did Mike Tyson out. get involved in this? Yeah, I I mean. <sighs> I can't remember exactly when Mike got involved, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah, we reached out to him, you know, through the process as we were putting the film together. And um, yeah, he was, he was so much fun to work with. Mike is apparently is obsessed with Sour Patch Kids okay. and was eating, he just, I, I watched Mike Tyson, Iron Mike crush like 20 packs of Sour Patch Kids back to back. We we're actually shooting a, a scene and it was a really long night. It's a long scene and you know, I, we're, we're getting the last shot of this, of the scene. And, and I look over while we're shooting and I see there's like 30 packs of, of Sour Patch Kids on the table in front of Mike mm -hmm. and the camera can definitely see the Sour Patch Kids. So I'm, I just, I'm like, well, should I, we can't use this. So I, I say, hey, guys, can you see Mike's Sour Patch Kids? Mm -hmm. And they're like, yeah. Mike's like, oh, sorry, I had to put, uh, just put, it in. <laughs> put it under his binder. He's like, okay, we're ready. You know, so he, yeah, he was, but he was a, it was a lot of fun. It's total sweetheart. And was actually, is actually, you know, from Brownsville, which is pretty much where we shot this movie. So yeah, walking around the Woodhall hospital in Brooklyn with, with Mike, with Mike was pretty interesting. <laughs> it had to be all hopped up on Sour Patch Kids. So are, are you saying that uh, Mike hit craft services like he has most of his opponents in a ring? Is what you're I saying? I think that's a fair statement, yeah. 
Well, and you as the producer, you needed you needed to like make guys, sure. We need more Sour Patch Kids for Mike. Come on. <laughs> Who's in charge of the Sour Patch Kids for Mike Tyson? We need more. <laughs> That's funny. I had no yeah, idea dude. about that about Mike. Now Jake Paul might have to find out about that, too. <laughs> cool. That's cool. nuts, by the way. Did he look like somebody who can go in the ring? He's he's 58 now, right? Oh, almost 57. Yeah, he's man. going against Jake Paul. He's going to actually yeah, get I've in the seen, ring. I've seen his training. He's... Looks good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's great. I guess we shouldn't put it past him. There he is. You check him out. Uh, and what, what what is his role in this film? So he plays the captain of the station. Yeah. Um, and there's a scene. So he's giving Sean Penn orders? Yes. Yes. <laughs> and, 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 and one scene, I, I don't want to spoil it too much, but sure. in, in, in one scene, there's a confrontation between Mike and Sean. It's pretty, it's pretty great. Are yeah, you yeah, serious? Yeah, that's wow. great. Yeah. <laughs> You must be sitting back here and what am I putting together right here? That's pretty yeah, cool. It was, it was pretty awesome. Yeah. All right. I got to check out Asphalt City uh, coming up in theaters near you Friday, March 29th. Uh, we're, does it blow your mind sometimes that it does feel like we're living Ready Player One in real life right now? Like yeah, that, that, I mean, that, that movie well, was ahead of its time in a way? I think you know? we have been for a while, you know, like even through social media, everyone has a digital profile that they spend a lot of time focusing on and, and curating for themselves. So in a way, yeah, well, I guess we are living kind of in a virtual reality already. How, how did you get involved in that project? That was, yeah. So I, we shot that movie in 2016 mm -hmm. and I remember auditioning for it. And my agent called me after I auditioned and he said, they're going to go with somebody else. It's, you didn't get this one. I was like, wow, it's all good. You know, I can't wait to see the movie still. Mm -hmm really excited about it. And then a few weeks went by, I got another call. And they said, Hey, I, I think you should audition again. They want you to audition and try something a little different. Uh, and I did for the same role for the same role. Okay. And then Steven apparently responded to it. And then I, I went to, uh, did like a chemistry read mm -hmm. with Steven and I walk, I remember walking into the room and usually when you go in to do a chemistry read for a film of that size, there's the producers are there and there's a couple people shooting it. So you've got, you know, guys operating the camera, et cetera. There's kind of a, a crew. Mm -hmm. There were two people in the room other than uh, Olivia Cook, who I was reading with. And it was Steven and, and, and our casting director. And I said, who, I was thinking, who's operating the camera? Mm -hmm. And then Steven said, okay, well, let's go, let's do this. And he picks up the camera and he's, I realize he's shooting it himself. <laughs> and, and for those who may not know, the Steven's last name is? Spielberg. That's the one. <laughs> and, and he's and, the one who's like, I'll, and so, I'll shoot yeah, it? Yeah, so he's so he's two feet away with the camera. You know, it's the first time meeting Steven Spielberg. And he's how a, old are you at this time? I was 19 at the time. Okay. Um, and yeah, and I'm like, wow. He, and so Steven's operating. He's like, okay, all right, action. You know, he's got, just got his little handheld <laughs> camera boot. Yeah, it was such wow. a, yeah, it was such a cool nuts. experience. And then he kind of, in that, I remember he told me, uh, I said, hey, I don't know if I'll get this role, but I just want to say thank you so much for all of your movies. I'd be a different kid without your movies. And I told him, you know, E.T. is one of my favorite films of all time. And he said, uh, you know, funny story about E.T. And he just, ran, you know, went into this whole story about how they shot it chronologically and the kids never, you know, knew that E.T. Was, wasn't was real. They had the operator behind a curtain the entire time. And I just thought that was so so nice and, and genuine of him just to tell me this this story right. um, about this movie that I was obsessed with as a kid, still and, am. And then, so when did you find out you got the role? But that, you, was, that you that you won it essentially. Yeah, I, I, I it was a few weeks after that. Okay, something like that. Yeah. So wait a minute. So you're saying the 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 kids in the movie thought ET was real while they were shooting it? Is that what you're saying? Well, the when that's they were, the they were crux asked, of the story. Is ET real? Th there was a lot of ambiguity around it, right? They could see wires coming out, but there was still this kind of magical element that they never saw the operator, right? So in their minds, you know, they could imagine that he was real. And he said that was a big part of, you know, the chemistry between ET and and the kids. And so the last scene, whenever the kids say goodbye to ET, that was the last scene they shot in, with ET in, with ET in the film. Oh, my God. I'm yeah. crying all over again. And, Mike, I'm sorry to spoil it for you. E.T. is not real. What? I'm sorry, Mike. Did we just break that news? Yeah, I was. To you? He's a 58-year-old man as of two days Drew ago. Drew Barrymore and myself, like, at that time, oh, both believed okay. that E.T. was real, and I still believe E.T. All right. Real. Well, you're going to cry in your bowl of Reese's Pieces later on. I will. Can I, I find them? Where you can do them? that. Okay. <laughs> Ty Sheridan here on the Rich Eisen Show. And how many people just uh, hit you on the street about being Cyclops? 
or or hardly or, never because why because you're you're why, why is that do you think i don't know um yeah not that they should recognize me or something like is that, that. maybe what, it's the visor is that is that, is that it that was some football players don't get recognized because <laughs> yeah. they were always wearing helmets. Yeah, yep. yeah, that makes sense. So, so you and Emmett Smith have that in common. What's, it, what's funny is is I had you know I did Ready Player One where I'm wearing this visor on my face because I'm in a you know it's a, it's a, in a virtual yes. reality. Right. And then I did two X Men movies where I'm wearing a visor on my face, which is actually crazy. You know, acting is I mean the most challenging part of that role was acting without your eyes, right? Because I have these red lenses, you can't see my my eyes yes. and that's a huge part of, of course you know yes. what you're able to do as there an a window into so, one soul exactly and yes. it was it was an exciting challenge for me but i couldn't i couldn't see there were there's like eight people in every scene in that movie and we all have you know marks on the floor one's pink one's green one's blue you know yours is blue right but when you put on a red visor they're all white and so so many times i would run and we come into this the scene and They'd say, "Okay, guys, stop, stop, stop. Ties on, ties on someone else's mark again, because <laughs> you couldn't see." <laughs> and it's like it's basically like you know you're per, you're, you have peripheral vision, yeah. But you're you're basically looking through a box like this. You can't you can't you know, look you down. Can't see, yeah, you can't see your feet, right? So you're constantly tripping over stuff on the. So side. when they're over budget, it's because you couldn't see. Is that what you're saying? I, I don't know. I don't know <laughs> if I go that far. They're over budget for other reasons. <laughs> That's pretty wild, man. Well, congrats on everything going on in your. Career. Thank you. Yeah, Appreciate absolutely. Uh, and Asphalt City um, is again a and, and, can, and you got uh, awarded with a breakthrough award at the festival by Variety, right? Is that what happened? That's right. Yeah, that's right. Congratulations yeah, on thank that. You very what does that What does that award look like? Where What is it like a Where is it on Is it on like Is it on a, a mantle somewhere? I think it's a plaque. Okay, it's a plaque. I, I probably gave it to my mother. I can't. I can't. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good for you. I don't. What do I need that for? I mean, you know. <laughs> you know. She, she, she's. Yeah, she, you know she you're a breakthrough anyway, mom, and mom's probably been telling you that since you've been born. Yeah, so she deserves she, I, the award. Yeah, she's uh, yeah, definitely number one fan for sure. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, no, it was it was uh, yeah, it's always it's always a crazy experience at at Cannes. Um, you know, it's it's highly highly uh, people are highly critical. It's a highly critical audience. So well, the French, come on, never <laughs> yeah, heard that story actually, before. Going back to the Cannes Film Festival was yeah. like the the. One of my one of the first the very first time I was at the Cannes Film Festival I was 16 years old it was mm -hmm. the second film I, I worked on premiered there and in competition we got a 20 minute standing ovation it was for a movie called Mud and it was really oh, sure. the moment that I realized the power of cinema and it's the moment that I realized it was what I wanted to do for the rest of my life and so it was cool to go back there with this film that you know is such a passion project and a labor of love for a lot of us and and a really important you know story about paramedics and and how important they are in, in our society. So to, to take it there and, and to go full circle to that place was, uh, was really special. Yeah, and having the film, a guy that you as an 11-year-old once offered a beer. That's right. That's right. That's pretty cool, dude. That's yeah. pretty cool. Have you ever seen him in Fast Times at Mid Ridge? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's all I that's would talk about. That's, I that, mean, as a kid, you know, that's... Oh, please. You knew him as Piccoli. Right? Uh, of course. <laughs> I mean, which is kind of amazing that and I think of it almost all the time when I I see him in these roles, right. you know. That's just amazing yeah. how he's that because I always thought that he's Spicoli, yeah. and now I don't like. Obviously, he's a serious actor. Oh, but, he's, but I would ask him all the time about Fast Times. Do you ever do that? Ever ask him about that? No, he's I, too, not even when he's had a beer or two with your parents. What's that? <laughs> not even after he's had a beer or two. That's when I you don't get think to start I'd asking. Seen Fast Times at that point when I was eleven years old. But. <laughs> Yeah, he's, he's Sean. Sean is What's Sean is a, an, an interesting guy, and he especially took an interest in preparation for for this film. I mean, I we bet. both did. I was going to New York off and on for years leading up to making this, and then we were both in New York two months ahead of of the shoot and doing ride alongs, twelve hour shifts, Friday and Saturday nights, mm -hmm. sometimes Tuesday and Wednesdays, so three or four times a week with 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 real medics going out onto wow. onto calls and then spending three or four hours in a classroom every day with the medics at Wyckoff uh, Hospital in, in Brooklyn. They were they were our advisors and, our, and supporters on the on the movie. So angels. shout out to them. They're all angels. They, all they really are. They really are. And the movies, it's funny, it's funny you mentioned that because the movie definitely uh, is, there's a there's kind of a call to Archang the Archangel Michael mm -hmm. in the film. And, uh, but they really are the, the, the angels of our society, you know, that are shepherding, you know, they're the people that you call in the worst moments of your life, 
they're the people that you call on the edge of death and mm -hmm. or a loved one is doing that and you're and you're witnessing it it's it's right. quite something yeah, they, and they move from one call to the next you know it's mm. not like it's just one experience in a blue moon it's all day every day well and so. i'm thrilled that you're paying homage to them here and also again in the film asphalt city which is available in theaters next friday march 29th starring sean penn and our guest ty sheridan and oh yes we can't forget Iron Mike Tyson. Iron Mike, that's Fantastic. right. Don't forget it. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.